What's up everyone, Art here with No Code Devs, and today I am gonna show you how to build a fully automated Amazon affiliate store. You could take products from any niche on Amazon, we'll add our affiliate link, I'll show you how to do that, and then we'll republish these products to our own site so that people can purchase from us and we'll get credit for the affiliate purchase. I'll even show you how to automate some of the content marketing to various social platforms so that these products disseminate out whenever they're added to the site. We're just gonna use a few tools. It's just gonna take a few minutes to get this fully automated store set up. So let's get going and show you how it all works. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Just as a refresher, what we're going to build today is a fully automated Amazon affiliate store that scrapes Amazon for a product of our choosing or a category of our choosing. We're going to sync that data to Google Sheets and then Airtable. We're going to modify it a bit so that we add our affiliate links and make any changes that we want to, like shortening the titles of the products because some of them are quite long. We're going to sync the scraped and edited data all to a front end. So this is, uh, this is super cool. This could be used for any sort of niche product on Amazon. It requires no technical knowledge, maybe just a small formula in Airtable and everything will be fully automated for you. We're gonna even show you how to sync that out to a social network. In this case, we're gonna use Pinterest. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first tool that we're gonna be using to make this all work is a tool called Browse AI. I'll go ahead and sign out, but essentially Browse AI is a very robust tool that allows you to scrape data from any sort of site, allows you to turn any site into an API, that kind of thing. What's really cool is they actually have a bunch of pre-built bots. You can take a look here and see if anything would be interesting to you. But one of the pre-built bots that they have is extracting Amazon US search results. So this is perfect for our use case. So I'll go ahead and log in. Okay, let this log in here. And I've done a lot of this, but I'll walk you through how I did everything. So whenever you build a new robot, you can either do it from scratch, or you can extract structured data and monitor site changes, or you can browse their pre-built bots, which is what I was just showing you. We already have a pre-built bot, which is just selected from that list, extract Amazon US search results. So if we click this, we can see, uh, since this is set up, we can see all of our history right here. We can see the task history, everything that's happened. We can set up a monitor. We actually have a monitor currently set up to run every day. We're gonna search dog toys with a max product of 50 and you can rename it if you would like. So we'll go ahead and save this. And then there's all kinds of different integrations. You can integrate with Zapier, uh, Airtables and Beta. Google Sheets is what we chose. The reason that we chose this is because it's the most built out integration and then we can take the data from Google Sheets and send it right to Airtable because Airtable is gonna be our ultimate database for this project. And then there's some settings here. You can adjust some settings if you would like. We're just gonna keep everything default here. Right now, this is running every single day. It'll search the keyword dog toys with a max products of 50. I wanted to keep it at 50 because there's a ton of products on Amazon and I don't wanna use all of my tasks from Browse AI, but you could set this up to be 10 or yeah, 200, whatever you would like. I would recommend going out to a Ahrefs and doing some searching to see what kind of results you get and what kind of traffic there is for your products before choosing your product. That can be really helpful when you build your affiliate store. So this is step one is using Browse AI to search and find Amazon products. It's literally plug and play. You just put in your search keyword. There's really nothing else that you have to do. If we take a look at the history here, we could take a look and see, this is the type of data that we get back, which is super cool. We get the title, we get the product link, we get the product image, we get the price, we get the number of views, the rating, and whether it's sponsored or not. So this is everything that we need to get going. Now, when you choose integrate and Google Sheets, it's a one-click setup. I've already done this, but when you click it, you simply just log in with your Google account. You choose if you want to use a new sheet or an existing sheet. I chose new sheet because we hadn't had this set up and actually Browse AI will completely configure the new sheet with headers for you. And I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so this is our Google Sheet. Again, Browse AI just set this up for us. All we had to do was authenticate into our Google account. They put in all of this data and some additional data that, that we 
don't need, but essentially you get the date, you get the job link, which is just a link to the browse AI job task, the search keyword that was run, uh, max products position, but this is what we're really looking for. We're looking for the title, the product link, the image, the price, and the rating. We don't need any of the reviews. If you scroll down, you'll see some do have the number of views associated with the product. For our use case, we're not doing that. And we don't care whether or not it is a sponsored post, at least for this use case. So now that we have our data in Google Sheets, this is great. Every day when this bot runs, it will actually add the results of the run to this Google Sheet. So it'll continue to add products each day exactly to our search term if we wanted to do a, a one-off search for something like Kong dog toys or furry dog toys or plush dog toys or something like that, we could actually just put that in here and click run task and it would run that search based on that parameters. But then the monitor would go back to the original search term, which is dog toys every single day. So you could add data that way as well. So now that we have the data in Google Sheets, I'm gonna talk about the next steps. So we're gonna use a product called Softer. Softer is a front end website builder that uses Airtable as a back end. So, Softer very nicely makes it super simple to pull in data from an Airtable base and create a website for it. So, that's what we're going to do. And the way that we're going to get our data from Google Sheets to Airtable is using a tool called Zapier. Zapier allows you to automate these types of things. And whenever a new record is added to our Google Sheet, we're simply going to want to send it over to Airtable. Now, I've set this up, but I'm going to walk you through what that looks like. And I'm going to show you the filters that I've used to make it so that we don't get any sort of duplicate data in case the scraper pulls a duplicate record, which definitely can happen. So we'll come over here to Zapier. And this is the Zap that we set up already. And I'm just going to walk you through all the steps here. If you're not familiar with Zapier, it's just a tool that allows you to connect different APIs together. There's 3000 apps in there. So you can normally find what you're looking for. So in this Zap, what I'm doing just at a high level is watching for a new spreadsheet row in our Google Sheets which is here. So it's just like watching this spreadsheet. And then we're only going to continue if the name does not exist. So this is what filters out our duplicates. So if it does not exist, we'll continue. We're going to create a record in our Airtable base, which is essentially the same look as our Google Sheet. It's just condensed down to the exact fields that we want. So these are the fields that, that we have and we need. So this is what it looks like here. I've already been syncing some products so you can see what this looks like. Now that would work just on its own. I have two additional steps here, which I'll talk about at the end, where we basically look up that record and then send it to Pinterest because we're going to try to uh, syndicate some of this content out to different social networks. You could do Pinterest, you could do Twitter, you could do Facebook, whatever you want. But I chose Pinterest because I think it's most relevant to this type of product and this type of project. That, those are the final steps. I could show you those at the end, but just to go through this like in a little bit more detail, I'm not going to really explain Zapier too much because it's pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory, but you simply choose your account. You set up the trigger, which is just the watching for the, the new spreadsheet row. And it's just as simple as choosing your spreadsheet and then the worksheet associated with that spreadsheet. Same thing with creating a record in Airtable. Once you get a new spreadsheet row, all that you need to do is map the fields to your Airtable base. So we've set up this Airtable base. We connected which one it was, which is called Amazon Affiliate. As you can see, Amazon Affiliate. And that we chose the table, which is table one, and we just mapped the field. So we did the product name, which is the product name and the product URL, the image URL, the price and the rating. We do have some additional fields in Airtable, like product URL affiliate and short description and approved. We're not going to sync anything to those because these are fields that we're going to modify in Airtable itself. So that's our zap flow. It's super simple. It's basically a three-step zap. The only reason we need a second step is to filter out any duplicate data. So let's head over to our Airtable. So now that this is running, anytime a new product is found on Amazon, it's actually going to send it over to this table. And we have the name. And then there's a couple of things that I did here. So the name sometimes is very long, as you can see. And that just wouldn't look good 
on our sort of website, which is in this format because the name would just go on and on. So what I did is I actually shortened the description with a formula. This is the formula here. You can find formulas like this uh, on Airtable's support guides, but essentially it's like a cell-based formula that if the, you know, what I'm saying here essentially is this, if the length of this field is greater than 50, then we want to shorten it down to 25 characters and then add three periods after it to show an ellipsis. So that's what this is doing here. All of these are greater than 50, so it's just shortening it and adding an ellipsis, and you can see how that appears here. It looks really good. It's clean. Everything's uniform. Same thing here. We get the product URL from the scraper, but that doesn't really do us any good because that's just the Amazon product URL. What we want to do is we want to add our affiliate ID. So this tutorial assumes that you're an Amazon affiliate, which is super easy to sign up. You can create a affiliate account for free in just a matter of minutes. And then what will happen is you'll get an affiliate ID when you create your affiliate account. And it's just as easy as adding your affiliate ID to the end of the Amazon link. And then if somebody clicks through that link, you will get credit for the purchase if they purchase that product through your affiliate link. So this is again, just another little formula in Airtable. You can choose the field type as a formula field type. And once it's a formula field type, you can just write in your formula. And I'm simply just taking the product URL field and I'm adding my affiliate tag after the URL. It's as easy as that. And now I have an instant product L with an affiliate code on each product. The image URL is, uh, this is an attachment field in Airtable. When we zap over the, the image URL that was scraped, it actually converts this into an actual, into an image in Airtable. Really easy and it works very well. And then finally, we're just syncing over the price and the rating. There's nothing we have to do with those convert right away. I guess you could get creative and like perhaps convert this to some sort of star system or something like that. But I think this works well for our use case. And I just added another column here to be approved in case you wanted to manually maybe approve which products were getting added to your site. You could check them. If you didn't like this product, for instance, maybe you wouldn't check it approved. And I created a separate view of approved here, which just filters when approved is checked. So you could set it up that way and do a manual approval. But for this, I'm just going to send everything that's scraped right to our website because that's what I'm trying to do here. So... Now let's hop over to Softer. Softer is, again, no code website builder. It is actually completely free to use with a custom domain, which is super cool. It's one of the only website builders that allows you to use a custom domain for free. They do have a little bit of softer branding in the footer, but it's very minimum. So it's a great way to spin up like an MVP of a project right away. Now I've created this site from scratch, but it's really easy to add elements. You simply just add a block. I added a, uh, I added a navigation. I added a hero section here. And then I'll show you how this part works here, which is essentially our connection to Airtable. So whenever you add a new block, you have a choice over here of dynamic and you can actually pull in a list and these dynamic lists are connected to Airtable. And I'll show you what I mean here. So if we take a look at this list, when we're clicked on it, it actually allows us to choose our Airtable base. So you have to, when you first connect, you have to one click connect to Airtable and grab your API key. But once you do that, you just simply paste your, AT, your Airtable API key in. And you have access to all your bases. As you can see, all my bases are here. You choose your table, you choose which view you want to connect to. We're using our grid view, if you remember. So grid view there. Once you choose your view, there's some settings here. You can filter. We happen to be filtering by the rating. So we get the highest rated products first. You could choose the number of items that you want per page. If we did this as five, you would see this would update in real time. So you get like a super quick, fast editor that you can modify all the data on. You can choose the number of items per row. You can do three, you can do four. I actually think that three might look a little better. So maybe I'll keep that here. Um, and then there's some additional settings, inline filters. So we have a filter here by rating. Basically, if you expand this, you can choose which field in your 
uh, Airtable base you want to allow the users to filter by, and then you can just choose which items they can filter by. You can choose if it's like a, what's at the top, it's at the right here, which doesn't look as good, which is why I chose the top. You could choose a list or a dropdown, allow multi-select, all kinds of different things. You can add additional filters. You can allow users to multi-select things. So a ton of features here. You can add search functionality. You can even change the helper text. So we are seeing that people search by ball stuffed or squeaky, but then they could filter by rating. These item fields are what the data is connected to. So if we hover over this and click it, this is the image field and we're just mapping this to the image URL. So all you're doing here is mapping your fields to the, to the fields in the Airtable base. So Right now we have the fields mapped. We have the image as the image URL, the short description as the short description, which is our description that we shortened down. We have the rating and then we have, we added a button, uh, which is the buy now button. And we are actually mapping this to the product URL affiliate. So if somebody clicks this, they go over to Amazon with our affiliate URL link and we would get credit for it. Now, within all of these text fields, their settings, you can actually change all the styles, the padding, the background color, the border. I didn't go crazy modifying this because this is just created for a tutorial, but there's like a ton you can change here to make this site unique and your own. So I just want to show you all the different customization settings that you can do here. You can even control what happens when somebody clicks on an item. It opens a external URL and we have the URL as product URL. And actually we don't want that. We want to actually change this to product affiliate URL and we'll have it open in a new tab. Once you're done, you simply publish. We connected our custom domain already. We can go ahead and publish and see what this looks like. So let's take a look. And this looks like really nice. This took 10, 15 minutes to set up. I had to write a little bit of copy here. I made a free logo on Canva. And we have our site working here. This looks really good. You can scroll through these pet products. If you click anything, it will take you out to that product on Amazon. It's put in our affiliate ID in the URL that's passed through. You could search for ball, for instance, and in real time, you get a filtered results of everything that's in our database with a ball in it. You could even search by rating, like what's a ball product that has 4.8 stars. There's just one item. So you can clear these out, get back to the full list, that kind of thing. I did not add a lot more functionality to this because this is just a simple site, but I wanted to show you how easy it was to set up a fully automated Amazon affiliate site using no code tools. Again, this will update every single day with new products. So super cool. It's like hands off. You don't even have to maintain it. It will create these products, but how's anyone going to know about it? That's why I created the uh, additional steps here in Zapier that syndicate the product out the Pinterest to a pet board so that anyone searching for pet products on Pinterest will hopefully begin to find these products. You could also do a similar thing to market it on Twitter with certain hashtags to get it found, that kind of thing as well. So that's it. Hopefully this gives you uh, an idea of how you can use Browse AI, Google Sheets, Airtable, Zapier, and software. So it's like a five tool stack to build a fully automated affiliate, Amazon affiliate store. Thanks so much.